Um, it's pretty busted out. I can only imagine. Yeah. I, I was going to ask, I mean, you know, as you mentioned, uh, on this end of things, happens to me all the time. I haven't talked to someone in a while, and I'll reach out to them, and I'm not, it's just for some reason they become top of mind. But right. why did uh, Sherry become top of mind, you suspect? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. I, I think maybe it was divine intervention where maybe it was a way of saying, hey, you need to reach out to this lady because, you know, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, but I know that uh, we crossed paths. We saw each other, said hello to her. We never had uh, what you call it, a, a conversation. And I think that's was important for me to bring you in. I appreciate you coming in. A lot of news sure. going on in the Denver area. Oh my God, this city's going crazy. But I appreciate you stepping in. And I think you would maybe have a little more insight as to where her mind was in the early days and, and what was happening in her life. Well, I mean, I uh, you know uh, was born in Denver and then uh, education took me to California during my early uh, adulthood, but when I came back, I mean, Sherry was, you know, one of the ones that was, in my estimation, uh, plugged in as a um, Latina journalist, uh, in my mind, you know, a trailblazer up there with, uh, you know, Andrew Hill still on the air, right. Bev Martinez uh, from Channel 2 News, um, at least on the, the broadcast side. Right. And, um, she was just someone that you knew, and if you didn't know her, it was someone that you should know. Absolutely. And, uh, and she was one that I never actually got to sit down and talk to, and and I wanted to, and that was my goal uh, to do today. And uh, and the more I read about her, God, she was so well connected, and uh, interviewed so many nationally known people, and being locked in with uh, uh, with PBS and all those interviews. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we couldn't get. Um, uh, them to unlock the vault uh, so we can actually show some of her work. Mm. She had a real nice program called The Latin View. Right. I don't know if you ever saw yeah, that. I did. Yeah, but it was course. really interesting because <laughs> she would uh, she would definitely highlight Latinos in all forms of contemporary mm -hmm. worlds. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. It was it was so cool, and she could either <clears throat> you know bring it down to the level or, or take it up. I mean, she could um, get it at the uh, drop of a dime, and and that's I saw her. From the screen side, you know, um, and and I, man, I said I got to get this lady in here. But um, from your conversa conversations with her, Greg, what uh, what do you think she was uh, thinking? In, well, in them early ages. Uh, I mean, I just know that when we really first started communicating, which goes back to 2000, um, it, we'd see each other at a number of charity events and. It just, uh, you know, transcended from just, hey, how you doing, to, you know, seeking each other out. We communicated a lot on um, social media and via email, and she was always very supportive, especially as a much younger journalist, um, someone who, you know, grew up and evolved as a journalist in the same market. Right. It was important to me because of that perspective of what Denver once was, what it was at the time, and what it is now, you know, right. it was, was important to me to have that sort of historical perspective. Absolutely, and the fact that she was from North Denver. Did you go to high school with her? Uh, I did not go to high school. No, she, she was just a couple years older than me, okay. but, uh, okay. but, you know, yeah. especially some of the, the bars that I went to <laughs> yeah. in North Denver, uh, she was known in many different circles, which to me is the ultimate compliment, right? I, absolutely, you know, and, and Sherry, she was, she, she was a fun-loving person outside of her job. She'd love to have a good time. She was very approachable. I think that's a good way to say it, very approachable. And uh, I sent you a text of what uh, Sal Gomez uh, sent me. And again, I try to get Sal on, but today is just not a good day for him. And our condolences go out, to, I'm talking about Sherry's husband, and our condolences go out to uh, the Gomez and the Vasquez family. And you could go ahead and read that because I, I have, a, have a tough time reading it. So, again, this is from Sal, her husband? Yes. Yep. Uh, Paul, I would like uh, for your listening audience to know that Sherry always considered herself a journalist, both print and television. Sherry was happiest when she could combine her two loves, journalism and the Hispanic community. When she could use her journalism skills and profession to work on behalf of the Hispanic community, she was the happiest. In the past five years, Sherry had turned her skills and attention to the spiritual healing arts and was teaching tarot classes in various places throughes throughout the metro area. It says there, I'm attaching a brief right. bio. Thank yeah. you again for your 
thoughtful kindness. So he did, um, and Sal is another one that uh, I used to see him at all the Hispanic award mm -hmm. celebrations and the Hispanic uh, um, Chamber of Commerce events, and but I never had a chance to uh, meet him one on one. And uh, you know, I spoke to him this morning. It felt like I've known him forever, and, and it's just uh, some of these things, uh, you know, bring a community together. And I think us being in the world of journalism and and radio and television it brings us together as a community you know uh you got andrew hill you got um you know all these um hispanic um uh, people in the media where a lot of times i think in her time it probably wasn't as prevalent as it is now and it's kind of hard for you to say this but i can is it's it's not easy for hispanics to break in a radio and television um, because of whatever's going on around them. And I think Denver's kind of an a, a, a open market, more of a, 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 you've got a plethora of melting pot of people, so that creates opportunities for people as yourself. Yeah, I, I think of her a lot when I first started in, or was trying to get started in journalism. Uh, I still belong to a, an organization called the California Chicano News Media. Mm -hmm. And their basic premise is, you know, there were a few that opened the door, and once you're in as well, it's your job to you know pave the way for those that follow behind you. Absolutely. And, and, and again, I, I I've used this, this phrase already, but Sherry to me exudes that. I mean, she just uh, she probably fought a lot of battles like you did to get where she got, and then once she was there, she didn't forget about those coming behind her. And, Absolutely. Uh, not. Owe a lot to her. Let's hear a little bit uh, from Sherry Vasquez right now. reporting from the NCLR conference, National Council of La Raza in Chicago, and here we have with us Roy Cosme, who is with Pfizer Helpful Answers. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having So we're live on Facebook, brother. Even though we're not on the air, we're live on Facebook. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, um, hi everybody on Facebook. Those of you people that are logged in and as we're doing this tribute to Sherry, you're welcome to uh, put some notes. If something that uh, reminds you of Sherry or something cute, something funny that uh, reminds you of Sherry, we love to share it with everyone else. I mean, now with the technology that we have available and, uh, you know, Henry being such an influencer. This guy, Henry, he, he must not sleep. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever, and I, I don't think I've ever seen him not smiling. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, he could have it heavy and, and thick. But, uh, yeah, if you'd like to share, because I know a lot of people were going to go online and, and see, you know, what was going to be said. We don't call it a eulogy. We call it a tribute, a celebration of life, uh, because uh, I think that's what Sherry would have liked. Um, we appreciate you being locked in, and we'll, we'll do about another 10 minutes of this. I, I woke up Greg from his sleep working overnights, and it's not easy, but uh, he thought he, uh, it was important that he be here with us. We appreciate you coming in. Um, uh, to this um, special tribute. Yeah, that's what we always try to do. I mean, uh, cross promote, if you will. And, you know, right. We also work for Channel 2 and Fox, so I have a, a professional page, Gregory, N I E T O. So, any thoughts there as well? I'm going to see uh, on some level we can also do some uh, broadcast type story. Nice. I'm sure this week. So, that'd be awesome. It's, it's just uh, uh, unreal seeing her, you know, her professionalism, her, uh, the way she carries herself. Why don't you, don't you think that she ever decided to maybe become an anchor person? Do you think that wasn't what she wanted? I, I, I say this respectfully, but I, I, I just think that uh, on some level, some journalists feel that by doing that, if you will, you're a little constrained in what you're able to do. That makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the journalistic you read freedom. Them, you read, yeah. And, and I'm not taking any away from because I do it. Right, right. right. Um, at some level, as we're watching this, you know, off screen here, I mean, she had the freedom to bring issues to the table. Yes. That if you're anchoring for one of the stations in town, you probably wouldn't have that opportunity. No. Okay. That makes sense. So, once again, if you'd like to post something on Facebook, uh, say something funny about Sherry, 
Uh, you're welcome to do so. And any thoughts? Just tweet do you see well. something out there? I'll just tweet some out. Oh, as well, okay. Too. Yeah, and uh, and Greg is good at this. I'm just learning Facebook <laughs> myself. <laughs> I see uh, some stuff already came through here. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's see uh, here. Wow. Ortiz Cycles locked in. Appreciate you, Ortiz Cycles. And um, everybody's just giving us a, some, a thumbs up. Sylvia Tuziri locked in. Margarita Ford, Robert Joseph, Joanne Hernandez. Thank you all for being locked in as we're doing a special drip tribute to Sherry Vasquez. And uh, once again, Fox 32 and the Deuce. And there you have the couple right there. Yeah. Uh, that I think that was the... Uh, that was the uh, actual uh, interview that... Where they met? Where they met, I, I think. Gonna say, I was going to say. You know? The way they're interacting there, it kind of oh, looks yeah, like they, you, you they, can... they're not husband and wife yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, they was a, in a very professional <coughs> level. So uh, there you have it. Um, as they're kind of going back and forth, and you could kind of see a twinkle in each other. Yeah, eyes, you, know, you know, it's in interesting, and it's a, this is a, a tribute to both of them, is that every time I would see her... Every time I would see um, Sherry, um, I would see Sal, or vice versa. Like, right. you never, and the majority of the time, it'd be at a charity event, um, but you would never, oh, he, Sal couldn't make it tonight, or if I would see him on the off chance, it would never be, well, Sherry couldn't be here. I mean, they were always together. Yeah, and they were both very busy people, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. Sal working for a, uh, a major uh, company and, uh, and all of that. So, once again, uh, those of you listening on KUHS, we're also live on Facebook, uh, in studio with me from uh, uh, from uh, Fox 31 in Denver. Uh, we have Greg Nieto and the Deuce, and he's here with us, kind of giving us uh, his input on Sherry Vasquez. And, um, you know, for me, I would have known her. I would have met her today, and, and, um, and we were talking about what was it that made me reach out yeah. to her last <clears throat> Tuesday. And uh, I, if we put a gun in my head, I, I couldn't tell you. That's just... Uh, that's just the way the, the you know the way things happen in life, and uh, we know that uh, she's in a better place. I know they're uh, gonna do a celebration of life uh, in about three weeks. That's what, uh, uh, what Sal, said? Sal told okay. me that uh, they won't be doing anything for at least three weeks. Um, they are going to cremate her mm. today, and oh. that's why it's so hard for Sal to. Uh, even consider coming on but he wanted me to share with you and, and tell you thanks and um, and um, uh, you know the people here at KUHS as uh, we take life for granted sure. and we just don't know one day to the next and that's why there's news one day to the next